Hey, I'm Nick from No Code Bros, and if you're looking to make a clean dashboard that's completely mobile responsive, hit that like button and stick around, because this one's for you. Our dashboard will be structured like so. A floating menu on the left, a floating header on the top, and just a few links within that menu. These links will act as our navigation through the page, and we're going to navigate through the page via parameters by showing and hiding stacked groups on the page. To start, let's drag a floating group onto the page. This will serve as our left menu. We'll name it Floating Group Menu. We'd like it to float relative to both the top and the bottom. That way it stays centered as we scroll up and down the page. We want it to horizontally float relative to the left. Let's set it in the very top left of the page by setting our X and Y values to zero. And we want to set a width between 200 and 300. For now, let's set it to 200. And a height, the full width of the page, which as we just set, is 1000. Let's give it a background of white. And let's give it a small shadow, just so it pops off the page a little bit. Setting our vertical and horizontal offsets to zero. Blur radius to 1, spread radius to 1, and we'll set it to a black with the opacity of 10. Next, let's add our text elements. The first thing we'll need is a heading. We'll write dashboard there. Let's set this to enter 700 size 16, and we'll just make that black. Line spacing of 1.5, of course, which means we need to set our element height to 24. For more information about that, check the previous video. And now we need two more text elements. These will serve as our navigation through the dashboard. Our two tabs that we're going to have in this dashboard are going to be links, And we'll change this to enter regular, just so it doesn't stand out quite so much as our header. The second navigation we're going to need is settings. And let's give these all a little space. About 20 pixels should do. And there we are. Because this is so small at 200 pixels, let's go ahead and make this element fixed width, which it already is. That way, our text doesn't need to change, and we don't need to worry about responsiveness as far as this menu is concerned. Next, let's go ahead and grab an icon that we'll use to close this menu when in mobile view. And we'll set that icon size to 20 by 20. And we'll choose a close icon. And give it a color of black. and give it about 20 pixels of space on each side. Now that we have the icon on the page, we don't want to see it all the time. For instance, when we're in desktop view. So let's go to our conditional tab. Define a condition. When current page width is greater than or equal to 1440, we want to change this element's visibility, making sure it's invisible when we're in desktop view. Conversely, we want to go ahead and get to add a conditional to our floating group menu. When our page width is less than or equal to 1440, we want to be hiding this dashboard. That way, it doesn't get in the way in mobile view, and users will then be able to bring it out and hide it on command. Now that we have our icon in place, let's give it a workflow. When close is clicked, we'll add an action, and we want to animate an element. That element, of course, is our floating group menu. We're going to give it an animation of transition, no bounce, left out. That way it slides off the page when the close icon is clicked. Let's put a header on the page. 
grab another floating group. Let's set our X and Y values to zero to bring it to the top left of the page. Give it a width of 960 and a height of 60. Let's set a background style of flat white. And give it an outset shadow just as we have our other floating group. Just to help it pop off the page a little bit. And we'll name it floating group header. Perfect. The only thing we need in our header right now is a hamburger icon in order to bring out our floating group menu. So let's grab another icon, drag it onto the page, and for this we'll select bars. We'll make those a size of 20 by 20. We'll go ahead and center them vertically in that group and bring them a little closer to the outside so that everything's got 20 pixels to breathe. Let's go ahead and add a workflow to our bars. Start a workflow. When icon bars is clicked, we want to animate an element. That element is going to be our floating group menu. And we're going to add a transition, no bounce, left in. So that our menu will now slide in when the icons are clicked when we're in mobile view. Because we built our header second, it's going to be on top of our floating group menu. We don't want this. So let's go over to arrange and bring our floating group menu to front. That way they'll appear just as they are on the page. Now that we have our menu and header set, let's go ahead and add some content groups. Let's go up here and hide our floating group menu so that it's out of the way. And then we'll add a regular group to the page. We'll set its Y value to 60. We know we can do that because we know our header is 60 pixels tall. And our X value to zero. A width of 960, the full width of the page. And for the height, we can play with it a little bit. We can make it longer or shorter as needed. Let's give this group a background style, a flat color, and give it a color, any color you like. I'm going to do purple for now. And then we're going to set its opacity to 10%. That way we can see the area we're working with. Let's name this group, Group Content Links. Next, let's grab another group. This group will house our actual links on the page. We'll make it a width of 640. That way it's easily divisible by 320, our minimum for responsiveness, and we don't have to worry about it. We'll center it on the page and bring it all the way up to the top. Let's also give it a background style, similar to the one we just made. We'll grab our color from the first group, insert it here, and also give it an opacity of 10. That way there's a little three-dimensionality to it, and we can see which groups are on top of one another. We'll name this group Group Links. Now that we have our first content group, let's go ahead and make one for settings. It looks like we're going to need to make our page a little longer, and that's just fine. And for our second group, we can copy our group content links. Paste, and we'll just move it down the page. We want to have a buffer of 20 pixels in between these groups. And we'll rename this Group Content Settings. And inside, group settings. Let's change their color so we can differentiate the two. This time we'll go down to a blue. Perfect. Now we know which group is which on the page. If you have any interest in developing mobile apps, you're going to want to stick around for this part. And please subscribe to the channel if you like what we've done so far. To start showing and hiding tabs as we need, we're going to have to run a couple of workflows. Let's start with settings. Start a workflow. Add an action. 
navigation and go to page. This can be a little confusing because we're staying on the same page, but Bubbles rolled navigation into one action, so we're really just going to be using the parameters function of this action. Our destination is going to be dashboard, and we're going to send more parameters to the page. Our key for the purposes of this exercise is going to be tab, but it can be whatever you like. And our parameter is going to be settings. Let's go back to the design tab. Because we're controlling our settings tab, let's click group settings and add a conditional. Our conditional for this is going to be get data from page URL. What we're getting is a parameter and the parameter name or key is going to be tab. When tab from page URL is settings, this element is visible and we're going to check that. Now let's go to the appearance tab and make sure this tab isn't loading on page load. That way it only shows up when we click settings. And now let's run a similar workflow for links. Start a workflow, add an action. We're going to navigate to a page again, and that page is going to be dashboard. Our parameter key is going to be the same, but this time our parameter is going to be links. Now let's go back to the design panel. Our group content links is going to have a conditional on it, just as settings, but this one's going to be a little different. We're also going to get data from page URL, parameter with a key of tab. But this time we're going to say when get tab from page URL is empty, we're going to make this element visible. But there's a little more to it. When page URL is empty or when get data from page URL is links, this element's going to be visible. Now let's make a quick check to make sure these are collapsing their height when hidden so that they don't stack on the page. And let's see it in action. Perfect. And our settings? Just as intended. And there you go. We put together a great foundation for a dashboard that can be used in any app, not just the one we're building. Go play with this and let us know what you come up with by tweeting us at NoCodeBros. And go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the next part when we add the ability to add links, add settings, and more. See you next time.